Our next speaker is Amy Farah Weiss. Amy is running for mayor. And Amy has supported individual and collective well-being for research, education, and action for nearly 20 years. She started a nonprofit called Neighbors Developing Divisadero, which supports inclusive and sustainable neighborhood development. Amy is now running for mayor with the Yes in My Backyard campaign. It's a solutions-oriented approach to the issues and challenges facing San Francisco. Amy. So I'm literally throwing my hat in the ring, right? My Yimby hat. And you might wonder, why is she wearing that hat? Does that make her a joke? Why is she doing that? Well, guess what? Every time I wear this hat, somebody on the street wonders about it. And they say, what does your hat mean? And I say, have you heard of a NIMBY? NIMBY is saying not in my backyard to something. And you know, it's important for us as advocates for social equity and culture in our neighborhoods to be able to say no to things. We have to. But then we have to not just stop at the no, we have to figure out because we live in a democracy. And so we have to say, what is our righteous and strategic yes? And that's why I'm running for mayor of San Francisco. And I feel really fired up after listening to Tommy talk. That was great. And when, who wants uh, Bernie Sanders to come here in, in, to San Francisco and give a speech? Yeah, so we're excited about that, right? Go to Richmond and help out with their mayor's race. So if you get involved with the mayor's race here, he might actually come out in support of us because we are the epicenter of this contract economy. We are the epicenter of the income inequity that he's talking about, right? He's saying, you know, one-tenth of one percent owns as much in America as the bottom 90%. Well, we're the epicenter of that in the country, right? In San Francisco. So it's really important for us to not say when Bernie shows up and says, are you ready for a political revolution? And I, uh, uh, at least, I mean, it's at least, are you going to beat at least? No, we can't say that because that's what everybody's saying about Hillary. And I'm not putting myself on par with Bernie Sanders, you know, because of his amazing experience, but I have the same kind of experience of the last 20 years working for the same kind of issues that he was, and it's the same kind of dichotomy of a Hillary and Bernie kind of situation right now in San Francisco with Ed Lee, and then it's also Francisco, and Stewart has stepped up too, and this guy Reed Martin. And I think that it's really important for us to remember that the only way we're going to win this mayor's race is if we do what progressives initially intended to do with ranked choice voting, and we fill those three spots. And everybody can choose their order, but that's how we actually have a shot to do this. And you might also think, oh, this guy's Stuart, why is he running? He's a joke. But guess what? About 40,000 people read his, his uh, blog every week. And he might be able to activate a lot of people that don't normally vote. And you're saying that these votes are going to be decided on you know, 6,000, 10,000, 15,000 votes. Well, then we actually have a shot, right? And when you think, I want you to sit back for a second and think about four more years of Ed Lee. Oh, That's how I felt in November, right? I was feeling that kind of despair after Prop G lost and after the compost two blood sport, uh, money sport that happened, and it wasn't feeling good for me. And for me, the only antidote to despair is actually to take action, to be creative, to collaborate, to come up with solutions. And so I decided to do this. And why are we feeling despair? You know, I'm going to go ahead and say that we have class warfare going on in San Francisco. I'm going to go ahead and say that, but I want us to maybe choose a different metaphor that works for us rather than saying class warfare, because I think I don't want this to be a battlefield, I want it to be a garden. I want this to be a thriving ecosystem. So what happens? What happens is that you have land and like mid-market or Western edition or the mission where these areas have become a little bit toxic in certain ways because there's been institutionalized racism. So the land starts to not be so healthy. And then you get this influx of culture makers and nonprofit workers and teachers and the people who can afford to live in these areas. And they actually, I, I, can you tell I worked in a garden? I, I reactivated a dormant community garden in my neighborhood as a volunteer for, and managed it for two years, a New Liberation Community Garden. And I learned about uh, the mycelial network. Uh, you know, that's the fungal network. And what happens is that it connects underneath and it becomes the immune system of the garden. And it can actually, on one end, something's happening, and it can, if, if, if on the other end, there's like in the mission, something's happening, and then in Western Edition, we can actually learn from each other because we're connected underneath. But what happens, and then you get these pollinators coming in, and we got this really cool diversity of crops, 
you know, it's great. You know, you got your okra, you got your kimchi, you got your kale, you got, you know, in San Francisco, we've got a lot of different styles here. We have uh, pollinators coming in. We have the immune system of the mycelial network. Then what happens? Oh, we did the good work of making the soil healthy. So then, oh, Chase Bank comes in. They cause a whole global financial collapse, right? But they decide, you know, I'm going to come into my neighborhood of Divisadero, and we're going to displace two local businesses in order to move in a bank eight blocks away from another bank. That's how I got my start in local politics, working with Dean Preston, Quentin Mecky, uh, Gus Hernandez. There was a sign saying, "Say just say no to Chase Bank. And so I was riding my bike by it, and I was like, you know what? They just caused this global financial collapse. How is it that we're letting them displace two local businesses? I'm going to take a stand. And that's how I got activated. But you know, this idea of Chase coming in, they see all these funky mushrooms like us around, right? And they're like, <laughs> guess what? They just killed the whole immune system of the neighborhood because they're plucking out all of the things that are doing the good work to keep it healthy. Then they're planting their GMO monocrop. So, you know, use this metaphor of a garden. You know, this is an ecosystem. And we have these big corporations coming in and they're taking out the very thing that is giving our garden its life and diversity and culture and flavor. So that's what's happening. I pushed back against that Chase Bank. Uh, I was so shocked that Ed Lee's administration, it was his Office of Economic and Workforce Development that said, uh, they gave him the red carpet to come in and, and they were supposed to be beholden to formula retail law, but they weren't uh, for some reason. And so it was really disappointing, and I learned the zoning code. Learning zoning code hurts your brain a little bit at first, but if you have a good mentor like I did, or a few, then you figure it out, and you realize how it's all connected, and then we go up there, and that's what being a lawyer is, and that's what Ed Lee should be doing as a lawyer who was, you know, back in Chinatown was this community activist who was saying, you know, I can stop any eviction for a year. Where is he now? He says at the trans march that he's going to stop evictions. You know, come on, you've had two years to be doing that. Don't pander to us. Tell us how you're going to do it, because we don't understand how you're going to do it. We're at the epicenter right now, like I said, of this contractor economy. We're whittling away at the rights of our workers. We need to be figuring out what to do. San Francisco has a great history of breaking the law for some good, excuse me, good things like you know getting people married, right, um, and gay rights. But then what have we been breaking the law for lately? We say that the Google buses don't need an environmental impact review to figure out what kind of impact that they're having. Why? You know, we, get, we do these giveaways, we, the Twitter giveaway. It's the same thing that happened in my neighborhood that happened on mid-market. The guy who was keeping, that guy kept that storefront empty for three years in my neighborhood. Aris Mendy Bakery wanted to move in. A few other shops wanted to move in, but he kept it empty, the property owner. There's no tax or issue for him to keep it empty for three years and light it that way. And then Chase Bank gets to move in. The same thing happened on mid-market. Why was mid-market blighted? It was the property owners that were playing by the rules of the market. They were keeping things empty and taking a temporary loss. And then all of a sudden, we give them the biggest cash cow that we could give them. And we reward them for that behavior. We need to be coming up with solutions. I'm going to close by saying, uh, you know, they're saying that it's going to be a cakewalk election for Ed Lee. I decided that the only way that we can combat not having a lot of money is to actually have a lot of creativity and a lot of enthusiasm and have fun with this. And so what I'm saying to do is we're going to have a cakewalk event in front of City Hall. And I'm asking people to go to yimbyformayor.com slash cakewalk and take a survey. A lot of you I already gave these results to from 126 registered voters. But I'm asking people, tell me what the top issues you want me to debate and Francisco debate as your proxy with Ed Lee. I already have 126 people who have said what they want me to debate. And then I put 13 different issues down, which I'll pass out later. Um, you know, the top ones are running in San Francisco, inclusive and sustainable growth, short-term rentals, cultural preservation. These are the kind of things that we can't let this election slide without going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ed Lee and giving it our best effort. And like I said, we really need to come up with creative strategies and work together. I've been working together with Francisco since we both, uh, you know, filed our nomination papers together the same day. And so we need to fill up those one, two, three slots together. Thank you. Okay.